ready to open the hood, useful for the tutorials. And for car parts, the right idea is the Mr. Auto app. Easy, fast, and with better prices than on the website. You will find the TRW brake discs and pads used in the video by clicking on the link in the description. Turn off your vehicle's ignition, engage the parking brake, pull the hood release, and open the hood. Open the brake fluid reservoir. Loosen the lug nuts on the front wheels. Jack the front of the vehicle. Set the vehicle on jack stands. We strongly suggest that you watch the tutorial, jacking your vehicle safely, before carrying out this step. In order to change the brake pads on your vehicle, you will need to remove the wheels for complete accessibility. Don't forget to slide the wheels under the vehicle. Turn the brake rotor disc outwards to gain easier access. Insert a flathead screwdriver into the outside end of the oblong hole on the front of the caliper. Use the screwdriver as a lever pulling towards you in order to free it. This will push the piston in. Feel free to push the screwdriver further in once there is enough space between the pad and the caliper. Make sure you've pushed the piston in as far as possible before moving on to the next step using a 13mm spanner under the two caliper bolts. You may have to stop the nut from turning by holding it with your fingers or with a 19mm spanner. Remove the caliper. Here's a tip. Attach a length of electrical cable or a length of string to one of the coils of the suspension spring. To avoid ruining the brake hose, attach the caliper to the suspension using the cable. Remove the brake pads. To do this, slide them away from the brake rotor disc. Using a flathead screwdriver, remove the noise dampening shims. You will need to check that the caliper bolts slide properly and verify that the bolts and the protective rubber are in good shape. In case of wear, it is best to replace them with new ones. To loosen the disc, insert a thin flathead screwdriver that can slip between the two inside faces of the disc. You'll need to insert the screwdriver in front of the brake caliper mount so that it butts up against it. Using a T30 Torx socket, unscrew the screw that holds the disc. Pull the screwdriver out. Using a socket wrench and an E16 female Torx socket, loosen the first two screws that fasten the brake caliper mount. Depending on how stripped the nuts on the brake caliper mount are, you may need to use a hammer to loosen them. Remove the brake caliper mount. Finish unscrewing the screw that holds the disc so that you can remove the disc. Sometimes the disc may get caught on the hub. If this happens, use a hammer to free it. Finally, remove the disc. Clean the hub with a wire brush. All parts used in this tutorial are supplied by our trusted partners. These partners also help us create as many video tutorials as possible. Check them out in the description below. You will find the TRW parts and products used in the video in the link in the description. Take your new brake rotor disc. Before putting the new disc in place, you need to clean it using brake cleaner and paper towels to remove the storage paraffin. If your new disc is painted, you can place it directly onto the wheel hub. Take your new brake rotor disc. Put it in place. Screw the holding screw back in.
Use a metal brush to clean the part of the brake caliper mount where the brake pads are placed, which will allow them to be reinserted more easily. Reinstall the brake caliper mount once again, starting the screwing process by hand and finishing with a socket wrench and an E16 female torque socket to fix them in place. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. Make sure you have the noise dampening shims supplied in the kit. Place the new noise dampening shims on the brake caliper mount. Take the new brake pads. Insert the new pads into the brake caliper mount by sliding them in. Detach the caliper. You can now put it back on and screw back in the caliper bolts. Don't forget to use the new screws that come with the pack as they have been pre-coated with red locking fluid. Finish tightening using a torque wrench. You can now repeat the same process on the other side. Next, you can reattach the vehicle's wheels and set the car back on the ground. Before starting the car again, don't forget to screw the brake fluid stopper back on. Be careful! Before using your vehicle again, start your car and pump the brake pedal a few times to bring the brake pads together again. Try to drive smoothly and avoid sudden braking for the first 50 kilometers or so to avoid freezing the new pads. Operation completed. Hi, it's Theo from Usetool. I hope this video has helped you a lot in your car maintenance. We would be super grateful if you could spread the word so that we can produce even more tutorials. Simply give us a like, a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us boost the channel and help the whole community. Thanks a lot and have a great one.